finally, I just want to talk about some of the miscellaneous items. There are solvent effects on these reactions. And for SN1, you want a good ionizing solvent because for SN1, remember, you're forming a carbocation. So what that means is you want a polar solvent, something very polar like water. Or, like as our, in our example, we reacted with methanol, you could just use MeOH as the solvent or ethanol, but then that would be incorporated into your reaction possibly. So, And SN2, um, sometimes the solvent doesn't actually matter, but it can go faster in less polar solvents. And finally, strength of nucleophile. Now SN2, you want a good strong nucleophile because you're going to get a good fast reaction from that. It's going to go to 100% and you're going to be happy with the results. SN1, it doesn't really matter. Solvent is more important. So you saw that we reacted with MeOH. That's not a very strong nucleophile. So not so important. Okay, let's just talk about a really small, compli actually a really large complication of uh, SN1 reactions. And that is carbocation rearrangement. I know I mentioned before that you can have rearrangement, but it really can totally change the product of your reaction, and you can use this to your advantage. So let's take a look at a reactant. Here's a small branched alkane that's substituted with a bromine up here. Um, the three terms you need to know are primary, Ter secondary and tertiary. A primary example is when you have your leaving group bonded directly to the carbon and you have no other carbons. It's just all other, new, um, other leaving groups or um, just hydrogen. Secondary is when you have, let's say, your leaving group and you have it bonded to a carbon that is in between two other carbons. So this chain could just keep going on. And this would be a secondary carbon. And tertiary, finally. you would have something that is completely bonded to other carbons. So you've got three other carbon bonds to it. And this has electronic effects that will stabilize the carbocation. So basically all you need to know is that these kind of reactions will go faster. And with an SN1 especially, primary reactions may not occur Secondary reactions are okay, and tertiary reactions are great for SN1. Because that's going to be a really stable carbocation once it loses that bromine. It's the same thing with acidity. The more stable the anion with acidity, the more sta the uh, more powerful the acid's going to be. Um, so let's go back to that example I was drawing out before. This is going to be a secondary case. And secondaries are the ones that you get rearrangement with, almost always, especially in something big like this. So if you pop this off,
you've got that charge right there. And what you can get is an entire group shifting um, to change the position of that charge. And it'll thus stabilize the carbocation. So you might end up with this shifting over here and that hydride just shifting back over there to stabilize the little thing. And you can get something like this going on. It helps to think of these alkane chains as fluid and really transposable. So we can move these things around to increase stability, especially because you're heating this. So you're going to get all kinds of little side reactions able to occur. So then you'll get a reaction with this, whatever your um, nucleophile is. We're going to use methanol again. And if you had just predicted based on where that bromine was initially, you would not have seen this product. But you do indeed end up with this.